Okay, so, dun dun dun. <laughs> this is the yarn room slash office. My wall is kind of bare. I've taken a lot of those projects off. Um, oh, um, I failed to mention in my earlier video tonight that um, when I do get to my 500 subscribers, I'll have my giveaway again. And there's going to be some goodies in there. Um, and uh, along with one of my hand knit shawls and a crochet hook roll so that's in another video you'll want to hunt that down and comment under that video of the announcement of that giveaway um that's how you can be entered to win to comment under the video for the um giveaway uh so there's some yarns up there and projects i just haven't been feeling that one's for fall but I got a lot of them done, actually. I'm pretty proud of myself. Come think of it. Um, so, this is all as it was right there. And the finish it up, almost there. You can do it, Ben. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true, but there's so many other projects to start. <laughs> all right, so let's get into what I've gotten acquired recently. Um, well, we'll just start with just this week, really. Yeah, that's all I want to cover. I've got some whips laying around now. I've been whipping it up. But I've got some laying around I'm like, don't recognize because I'll put it down and start another one. <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's get into this mess. Uh, first off, got some Karen Latte cakes. Um, my daughter got these. They were in the $5 grab bags at uh, Michael's. So um, we got, I think I got eight, eight bags, I want to say. Um, not even sure what yarns still. We, we're deciding who's getting what, but uh, she asked me which ones I wanted. So this was one I picked out. It's kind of a violet with a white, hairy looking stuff to it. Very soft. I'm making a hoodie for fall to walk in. Um, got four of those. Then I've got five of these. And this one, it's a little darker than it looks in the, in the video. Um, it is just a solid blue with the fuzzy stuff. It's going to be um, a blanket I've started for my uh, daughter and son-in-law. That stuff is so soft. So, so stinking soft. Um, what a mess. Down here is some baby yarn. Um, got, I just got these on sale, I think, at um, Joanne's. That's going to be a little boy sweater for my grandson. I think those colors are really nice for a little boy without being to um, plain uh, and I'll probably knit that into like a baby surprise jacket okay so now I'm just gonna start dumping um, after that the next trip my daughter took she went to Hobby Lobby discovered they were having their sales she was able to get there first let me sit down here sorry for the bad lighting I took my floor lamp out of here These are the Sugar Wheels, $1.74, 100% acrylic, swooning macaroons. I don't see macaroons in there, but I would call it grapey. <laughs> um, again, they make really nice baby blankets. They're so squidgy, um, if that's a term. Maybe a word I just made up, squidgy. So, got two of each colorway. There's the two macaroons. And if it starts and ends with a different color, I just um, work into or from the outside, whichever it takes to go the same direction as the first skeins that I use. So I like to start on the start on the darker, so that's at the bottom of the blanket. And so when I get to the end of this one, I will then go to. The next color after that which again will be the black so i will take this and ball it from the middle out and then start with the black 
and go out and then reball that because this green will be on the inside of that ball. I will reverse the ball to where this green's on the outside of the ball and can then join it to that to finish up the blanket and it'll probably end on that turquoise. So that's how I do it to um, get a consistency in the color. And I don't worry about the dye lots. They're usually the same dye lot um, when they do the clearance. Um, here's some. This one is marbled marzipan. I don't even know what marzipan is. Does anybody know what marzipan is? Here's the marzipan. Um, I've used this colorway before and made my mom a really pretty scarf for Christmas last year, I think. So that is really pretty. It's got kind of mauves and a plum, um, a really rich teal. It's like a velvety looking teal and then it gets a little bit lighter. Sometimes between, especially like between the white or gray and uh, the color, you'll see more of a speckle look. And sometimes you'll get into the white and they'll still once in a while be a little patch of that blue or whatever color is with it. Um, it's really kind of a cool effect. I'll show you on the blanket that I um, just finished. Here's another color. Sugar wheel. See, $1.74 people. Normally seven bucks. Um, and I think I use a J hook. J or K works good with it. It calls for an eye hook. Eye hook for me would be too small uh, with doing the um, so many double crochets and I stitch really fast. It would fall off the hook a lot on me. Um, eight if you're using knitting needles. 355 yards. And I use really exactly. If you use the corner to corner um, pattern and make a blanket just stop growing your blanket you know you start at the corner stop growing it when you get one skein done and then you use the other skein to do all your decreasing side so then you can get a perfectly square um baby blanket with two doing the corner to corner um i literally have maybe 10 inches extra when i finish a blanket I just try to make them square the can. I don't use um, patterns per se for these. Uh, so there's that one. And that one looks a little bit different. I don't know. It doesn't. It's just the order of it, I think. This one seems to have more gray. But I'll work it out. Um, if it's not exactly the same on each end, I don't care. Uh, but these will probably all be shells because I'm kind of tired of doing the, the corner to corner. This one might be corner to corner. I think that'd be really pretty in the corner to corner. We'll just call it the C2C. That's a lot of, lot to, to say. Corner to corner. Um, this one, did I say the name of this one? Oh, this one's Glazed Donuts. Oh, I don't see Glazed Donuts. They're, they're names for these. They need some help. They need me. Y'all need me, R&B. Um, this one's Peppermint to to be peppermint to be um, don't see really much peppermint there I would think of more Christmassy but um, I would call this tide pool um, I've got a shell blanket started with this one with the other skein right now um, this one here is Saturday Sunday S-U-N-D-A-E Saturday Sunday I love that green with it. It's kind of a sage green. So um, as bright as the blue is, it, it kind of brings it back down to earth. That shows better on that side. So there's two of those. So right now I've got, counting this one, I've got two blankets almost done. So that would be three, four, five, six blankets. That haul... Um, let's see, I bought these. My daughter didn't buy these. I bought these. Um, she was just with me. Um, and then I've got, also got this bag of potpourri. <laughs> um, that was on sale, 40% off. Um, 
that was like seven bucks. This was a dollar twelve Wild Street Peacock. So I think that's really cute. Um, I don't know about the texture of it. I don't buy the, um, it's almost like a single ply. See how hairy it is already on the end? Wow. So I'm probably going to stitch that pretty tight and maybe do a half double just to get it where it's not going to fuzz up too bad. But I love those colors. Um, got two of those. So those were $1.12. So for all the yarn, just the yarn, I think was $21. And I've got enough for six blankets. Six blankets and a nice cowl. Um, so that's a great deal. Six blankets and a cowl for $21. Can't beat Hobby Lobby's clearance, I'll tell you that. All right, so that was the other day. Shove this out of the way. I've really got to get in here. I think I'm going to take, um, I'll probably move that. That's just a random uh, worst of weight yarns up there. I'm going to make a scrap blanket one day. Someday. Um, but these are whips in there. Those three bags there. Um, I'm probably going to move those and hide them behind the chair. And then I'm going to um, somehow, um, most of what I bought was either Chunky the other day, Chunky or Baby Chunky or Worst of Weight, uh, some prints or variegated. Um, and those are going to go in those three spots right there, I think. So that way I can just look at my yarns. I've got Worst of Weights down here in those two. And I can pull together just random skeins and maybe do some color block wheelchair blankets because we're also doing that. Um, there's no better time than right now to, um, if you are interested in doing some charity blankets, there's no better time than right now because Hobby Lobby, and call first because I, I drove 25 minutes after work the other day to a different Hobby Lobby I've never been to. On the other side of town, but only eight miles from my work. It took me 25 minutes to get there. 25 minutes. And I get there and they've got no yarn clearance. They've got the 30% off on all their yarn right now. That's not enough for me. You're not satisfied once you start getting this cheap, cheap yarn. So, um, that was a no-go when I went there. I was so bummed out. But I enjoyed the ride home. I heard a worship song I haven't heard for a long time. So then I decided I'm going to start practicing that song and uh, maybe sing it at church. Okay, so. Dun, dun, dun. This is one bag of the two huge bags that I got yesterday. And I think I spent $46. $46, people. $46. So some of them, they're not exactly the same. But they're similar. Okay, here's three chunky ones. These were $1.24 each. They're normally five bucks. I love this chunky yarn. That's what that one is. Um, but there's three of those. This one looks like it might be a little bit of a different dye lot than the other two. But I don't care. They're pretty colors. And it's so soft. Um, I just love Hobby Lobby's yarns. But these two blue ones here. I'm just going to start a blanket in the middle. And do a square and start with these two. When I run out of those two, then I'm going to go to those three. That's what I'm going to do with those. I've got five of those. That'll probably be a wheelchair blanket for some little, nice little old lady. I love little old ladies. I love old people in general too. I love babies. But, but um, old people, like I don't know. I love hearing all their old stories and stuff. And um, I read a memoir get to hear all my chit chat now because now I'm thinking of, of other things I didn't tell you in the other video. Um, I bought three memoirs um, last week, I think, maybe the week before, um, off Amazon. And I just read my favorite one of all time. I am going to do another video of, it's non-yarn related, but I'm going to do another video of me talking about all the memoirs that I've read that I love. Um, 
my all-time favorite before oh it's hard to say which one it was um there was one i laughed and cried so hard um called life and times of the thunderbolt kid that was probably i think that was the probably the first one that i ever read uh so that was my introduction to memoirs he grew up in the 50s uh but this one i got the other week oh my gosh i love it um and it's called running down red dog road um and you really feel like you're back in that time and in that era. She grew up in the Appalachian Mountains. So, um, or grew up Appalachian, whatever it is. And it just really, um, in the end, the last page, I just cried. And I thought, again, I did a video, <laughs> what, a month or two ago. Said, where does all the time go? And I was starting to cry. <laughs> but when I got to the end of this book, I started crying. And I was like, where does all the time go? <laughs> and you think about it, time is intangible. You know, it's intangible, but it seems infinite. You know, it is infinite. Time is for all time. And um, it just goes on and on. But where does it go? I mean, when it's gone, it's gone. You can't, you can't get that time back. So um, really, I mean, time is a currency when you think about it. You know, we give our time for work and therefore we get paid, but we're really, time is the biggest thing, that and the labor that we're getting paid for. Um, so yeah, but the end of that book, I was just like, where does all the time go? And I cried. It had, um, uh, one of those bittersweet, uh, endings. So, okay. I'm trying to arrange these in some sensible order. Let's start on the back row. This is all, this is the first bag still <laughs> of what I bought yesterday and only spent $47. I haven't counted my all my skeins yet. I showed you the first five of this bag. So here is, um, this would be 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23 in this bag alone 23 skeins and keep in mind i only spent like 46 dollars i think i'd have to look at my receipt but i'm pretty sure it was 46 dollars a lot of these were 99 cents each this one was a dollar 24 normally five dollars 99 cents yarn bee tender touch this stuff is so soft it's kind of chunky yeah it's pretty chunky but it's fluffy, so I think, you know, the gauge actually won't be that big. I think I'll probably use a K-hook with it. You could probably get by with an N-hook if you wanted to do it looser and drapier. So, let's go through these colors here. This one is the I Love This Yarn Super Soft Super Savings. You bet your bottom dollar. It... Literally $1.24. I mean, can you beat that with a stick? Look at it. It almost looks kettle dyed, like Malabrigo yarn. They have a fuchsia color colorway in this that I love that I want to make something with for fall, I think. But it looks even more color, uh, kettle dyed. And if you're not familiar with kettle dye, it's what makes these um, little subtle flecks and variegation to it. See? Little flecks of... Uh, pink and more of a, a lavender and lilac a little bit more of a um, closer to plum so that was not hugely um, kettle dye look but it does have some so that one is 252 yards called bright violet two of those so then I just picked these up and I decided at the register when I was putting these, I was trying to put them, if you go, see, I, I went, I spent 15 minutes getting these two, two huge bags of yarn and checking out 15 minutes, uh, maybe 14 minutes. I got there at uh, 746, <laughs> grabbed my cart, ran back to the back corner, <laughs> didn't run, you know me, but um, I just started like grabbing, grab, grab, grab. And I didn't like particularly look you know, and put a lot of thought into it because I don't care about patterns. I'm buying yarn. I'm buying stash. And I'll decide on pattern later. 
once you build up so much stash, you can just mix and match what you want. But when I was at the register, I literally was like, oh, these two here, those are going together. Those are close enough. And it's actually a, a nice little bit of a contrast to brighten up the drab green that's in this one. But this one is a print. I may do a chevron uh, wheelchair blanket with this one. Songbird Stripe. When you crochet these, they don't stripe. They, they're more pooled or variegated, a little bit of a speckle look to it. Um, but that will be enough contrast, really. It would be a good contrast, sorry, for a chevron. So not a perfect match, and I like it. It's got some ecru or light tan some pine green, a light blue, a darker blue, not quite royal blue, it's more of a powder blue, the plums, and the green really it has, a lot, it has a lot of speckle to it. There's a lot of speckle in there. Can you see that? So, loving those two together and they're both the same weight and feel good. This is the Tender Touch coming back to it. It is Sea Breeze. Colorway is Sea Breeze. I don't think I've worked with this one, but it's a lot like, um, uh, I think it's called Jamie or something. Is it Lion Brand Jamie? Jiffy. It's a lot like the Jiffy yarn but it if you ever use the jiffy i don't even know if they still make jiffy but it's um softer it has a nice little halo to it 99 cents and there is sea breeze 135 yards and it calls for a k hook like I said, I was planning on using the K. So there's the sea breeze and there's this tan that is called suede. It has a little bit of a sheen to it under the halo. I'm so sorry for the lighting. I moved my floor lamp in by my recliner so that I could read in the living room because the ceiling fan light it's just like this one in here. It really doesn't provide enough reading light. So here is the white. It's just plain old white. So all those were 99 cents each. Okay, now we're getting into the I Love This yarn prints mainly. This one says it's a print. Really not a print. It's more of a tweed, a so very soft tweed. Kind of a blue gray mixed with a tan and it almost has a really um a very twisted look to it. it looks like it has more twists than the other yarns that are the same as this brand but it, i think it just looks highly twisted because of those two different colorways mixed in together maybe they put some extra twist on it but um i love this color it's very subtle it'll probably go into a color block um, Afghan sandy gray and these are all 252 yards eye hook probably get by with I or J um, this one here is called mint lace um, this is not mint this is more of a blue um, Kind of cornflower blue and white and a little bit of a gray look to it um it's got a little bit of a speckly look to it in places you see like one side of the yarn is whitish and it kind of speckles on around um not highly variegated it's very um but i wouldn't say subtle either it's kind of a denim color okay the next one is called Aegean Stripe. Again, if you're crocheting, 
these don't really stripe much. You might get like a partial row if you're working a pretty wide blanket. Um, but it's kind of more of a speckle. This looks more like a print just because of that. If it were knitted up, it would look like a fair aisle. Um, but I love the colors in this one. I think a lot of these, like you could mix a lot of them together and kind of come up with a Southwest looking chevron blanket. Um, I think these blues here would be great, even mixed in with the black um, for a gentleman's wheelchair blanket. This one is blues again, but it's more, um, sorry I got some hair on there, I don't know where that came from either, probably came from the store. Um, it's got some... of a slate color with some blues denims white almost a white ice blue that one is called if you're interested in, in the color denims ombre so like I said denim that one is denims ombre this one is called float along float along. It's got some tan to it. Uh, and then these two, I don't even know if these two blacks are the same. I'm going to mix and match them though. I don't care. There's more white in this one. This one looks like it's been around for a while. But, you know, these were all $1.24. $1.24. <laughs> I mean, really, I don't remember seeing those prices since we, me and my mom, we used to go to a place called Frank's Ho Hobby, Craft and Hobby or something like that. Um, and they had all kinds of stuff there. And that's when I really started to get interested in yarn, even though I didn't start crocheting yet. Um, and then when I was little, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but when I was little, um, my dad was in AA and... Uh, a friend of his from AA, he worked for a yarn distri distribution company or something, or a manufacturer, and it was in the U.S., and they gave us a huge trash bag full of yarn, mostly baby yarns, and I ended up trying to make my daughter, um, when I was pregnant with my first daughter, trying to make her a hat, crochet her a hat and booties. The booties were way too big. They fell off of her. The hat was way too small. I never even put it on her because it fit our poodle. And she went running around the house with it on. Looked like a, a carnival dog. But um, I, I whipped him up without a pattern because I didn't know how to do patterns. So I just uh, just started stitching and just did it. So, um, But that really started my yarn obsession and uh, crafting. Uh, I wouldn't say crafting addiction. That started way back in... VBS. <laughs> Y'all ever go to VBS when you was a kid? Every day a new craft. <laughs> Every day. That planted the seed of uh, craftiness for me. So um, this one, let's go back to the name. Sorry. Keep getting sidetracked with my stories. Y'all get a memoir here. <laughs> smoky Water. Uh, I don't see Smoky Water. But I see smoke. <laughs> I would call that one more of a zebra. This one may be the same, but just a different dye lot. I don't know. There's no whites in it. Yeah, it's the same. Look at the difference between dye lots. How much white that one has. And this one has got... Boop! There's a little bit. There's a little bit. Really, not much white in that one at all. I'm going to try to get my head out of the way of the lights, but I don't care. I'm going to use them together, and whatever strikes my fancy, that's what I'm going to just pick up and start working with. And when I run out of one yarn, I'll just pick it up and do another one. This one's kind of, um, let me check my other bag. Yeah, this one here is kind of a loner. It looks really pretty with that violet color. Um... 
this one is, I think, a print. Yeah, it's a print. Another dollar twenty-four. Er, fruit punch. There's the name. There's your colors. It's got a little bit of limes, sage, blues, the hot pink. I love. I love that mixture of colors. So, that's that bag. I'm going to pause this and dump the other bag. Let me get these out of the way. Okay, so I've laid these out here. This is the second bag that was almost full. Pretty cool, once it was tied. Um, I just lost count. The other bag was 23. So, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 39. 39 skeins, y'all. For like 40 something dollars. 46 dollars, I think I spent. I'm going to have to check my receipt. I'm wondering if she, she literally, because I grouped these by the stickers. So a bunch of 99 cent ones and the different types. So um, I grouped them and she just grabbed them up and counted them in her arms, threw them in the bag, and then she entered them on the uh, register. So, uh, she entered the number on the register. So, she didn't scan each one. So, maybe she missed some. I don't know. I better check. I'll feel guilty if I got some for nothing. But they're next to nothing right now anyway. 99 cents for the soft and sleek low pill fiber. The soft and sleek I have worked before. Um, it was a really pretty colorway. But crocheted up, it doesn't have the same effect as it does with the knitting. The knitting really shows the nice flex and the transitions of the speckles and everything between the more solid rows. Um, but I really, I've been doing some knitting lately for the baby, and I don't care for knitting as much as I used to. I used to just knit like nuts, and um, I've just fallen back in love with crochet. So crochet, I can just, you know, put it down and pick it up so easily again, and not have to worry about uh, reading a pattern all the time. Uh, so, Yarn B, soft and sleek, low pill fiber. This one is a hundred, sorry, I'm having trouble seeing it. 186 yards for 99 cents. Pinks and purples, I think it's pink. It's kind of a light violet, light violet, medium violet, and then purple and white. So I think that one will mix nicely with this other one for something. I don't think two of these will be enough for a blanket, but I can mix something else in. I don't care. They're just charity blankets and people appreciate them. And usually, you know, you get a little brave and start mixing some colorways, you know, mix 